Hi everybody, welcome back to Bustling Home. Today I'd like to talk about why we homeschool. Since it's 2020, you might think that we picked up homeschooling because of the worldwide pandemic. That's not the case at all. We plan to homeschool before we had even heard of COVID-19. So that is completely irrelevant. All that's done for us is limit the opportunities to go to things like the zoo and the library, which those are important parts of homeschooling, but we can do without them for now. If you asked me about homeschooling before I met Jeff and had kids, I would have blown it off. No, I would never homeschool. Public school is fine. I did fine with public school. At least I thought I did fine with public school. So without further ado, in no particular order, these are the reasons that we have chosen to homeschool at this point, and we do intend to keep homeschooling through high school. Some of these might change as the kids get older, and some of these may resonate with you, or they may not. Maybe you can add to this list, too. Let me know in the comments below which route you chose for schooling and why you chose it. I'm always curious why people choose the one they choose. Number one is that homeschooling is actually cheaper than private school at this age. When I looked up the preschool programs at the YMCA, it would be about $7,000 for an academic year for the bigs and the middles. Now, for tuition for a school, that doesn't sound too bad, but this is only three or four days a week for them, and it's only two and a half hours a day. Plus, I'd have to drive a half an hour each way to drop them off, and the middles and the bigs would not have school at the same time of day. So I'd have to drive back and forth twice, three times a week, which would be two hours in the car of driving. That's ridiculous. Not to mention I'd have to pay for all the gas, which would be about 10 or $20 a day, depending on how many times I have to drive back and forth. We'd also almost never have time to eat lunch together unless I could manage a picnic, which is just not going to happen in the middle of winter in Wisconsin. But going back to the purely financial perspective, if I figure that half of the kindergarten teacher's salary goes to child care and half of it goes to education, then we would be spending maybe $2,000 to have her here throughout the school year. But then she also comes during the summer and we do year-round schooling with her. So that would be purely child care compared to sending the kids to preschool. And I spent maybe four or 500 on curriculum. Calculating all of it together, I figured that we saved close to $5,000 by educating our kids at home instead of sending them to preschool. Now that's most of the tuition that we would have paid. Number two, it's a lot less hassle to keep the kids home. If I were sending them to preschool, I would have to get all six kids up and ready in the morning. I'd have to feed them all, get them all bundled up in the winter especially, and out to the car so that I could get the two big kids or middle kids, I forget which, to preschool in the morning. Then I'd have to do that all again to bring the kids home. And we'd have this weird hour gap in between the morning preschool and the afternoon preschool sets that I can't actually get home to feed anyone. And I can't necessarily do a picnic because, again, winter in Wisconsin. So at least three days a week, we wouldn't be eating lunch together because I was trying to send my kids to preschool. That just doesn't make sense. Not to mention, as I said, spending an hour or two in the car per day is ridiculous. That's just not necessary. Number three is that the academics are customizable and flexible. In a classroom of 20 or 30 kids, there is no way that the teacher can customize the education to each individual. They can sort of group kids together. Like when I was in school, I was in the advanced reading group and the advanced math group. So I got set aside with a few other kids that we would work on somewhat harder stuff than the rest of the class. But in a homeschool setting, I only have four kids or later on six kids, maybe a few more kids, but still I am spending every day, all day with them. So I know them better than a teacher ever could. And I can customize their education to each individual child. I might even be able to use different curriculum for different children 
if they don't learn the same way. Or maybe one kid needs to have a strict schedule and another kid needs to have a little bit more freedom to manage their own time. I can do all of that with homeschooling. And that's just not possible in mass schooling because of the mass nature of it. It's not the fault of the teachers at all. It's just the situation that they're in. Number four is that our schedule is flexible. If we want to take off a nice day and go to a park or go to the zoo or just have a day outside to go play in the pool or something, we can do that. If they were in school, we would be stuck with the usual academic schedule of having school from August or September through May or June. We wouldn't be able to go anywhere during those months or only travel for brief amounts of time and pull the kids out of school, then they'd have to make up the work from the time they missed. With homeschooling, we can go to the zoo in October when all of the other kids are in school and it's a lot easier to get around. Or since Jeff is actually nearing retirement age, once he retires, we can take a family road trip. We could be gone for even two or three weeks in the middle of the traditional school year and use that as part of the education. Maybe we go and visit the Dakotas and talk about geology. There are just so many more options open when you homeschool. Number five, we choose what our kids learn. When kids go to public school or even private school, the school chooses the academics and they choose the approach. And the school doesn't necessarily choose it, but they provide a specific social environment that teaches the kids morals. The school may or may not be able to control what those morals are. Because when kids get together in a big peer group, it's mostly the peers influencing each other. Jeff and I saw how that worked with his second son, that when the parents don't have a choice in the peer group, things can go very poorly. We don't want that for our kids. We want to make sure that we know who they're hanging out with and know who their influences are. Now, we don't want to shelter our kids from the world. We actually want them to grow up in the world instead of in this artificial group of peers that mass schooling provides. That's just not how it works outside of school. As far as academics, I can also add things like meteorology, which of course I'm going to because I'm trained as a meteorologist. I love weather. Or we can approach history from the perspective of living books instead of reading through a textbook and learning it with dry dates and names and no personality. That's what I remember from history going through public school. I found it so deathly dull. But then once I got to reading books about history that actually had stories and real people, it's so much more interesting than I realized. And I want my kids to be able to see that from the get-go. Jeff claims he can even make advanced math interesting. Now I'm waiting to see this one because I found math really easy in school so I didn't mind the classes until I got to parts of calculus and into some other college level math. But he still has students thanking him years later so obviously there's something to it. I really look forward to seeing what he does for math with the kids. Number six, as I mentioned earlier, our experience with public school was not exactly inspiring. Mine wasn't bad per se, it just wasn't terribly inspiring. Jeff's experience with public school, especially through his older two boys, was bad. Jeff and I both attended public school, and our experiences were quite different. Mine was much more positive than his. I think I did well despite the public school system. I would have done well almost anywhere just because I am more academically oriented. And I was lucky that at least my public school offered things like advanced placement courses and dual credit with one of the state universities. Jeff was not so lucky. He went to a much smaller, more rural school that had none of these programs. The school basically assumed at that time that most, if not all of the kids would go straight to work and not go to college. Of course, that didn't end up being the case for Jeff. 
He went to college for music and had even started college courses for music while he was in high school because his high school could not support him. Then he went on to get a doctorate in math and the rest is history. But it's obvious that his school was just not prepared to support his studies. His two older sons had an even worse time of it. His oldest son was denied the opportunity to take the level of course that he had the ability to complete. He was put in remedial courses and ended up having to make up part of what should have been his high school experience at the community college. So his problem with high school was mainly academic. They just didn't provide him with the academics that they should have. Jeff's oldest son is now an electrical engineer. He obviously did not need to have remedial classes in high school. Jeff's second son, on the other hand, generally did fine with the academics, but the social environment was harmful to him. There were far too many delinquent teens in his high school, and he actually ended up dropping out of high school before he finished his degree just to escape that. It's kind of funny in some of the homeschool groups on Facebook and elsewhere that a lot of the moms are the ones who are more pro-homeschool. And they're trying to convince their husbands that homeschooling is right for their family. Sometimes I almost have the opposite situation, that Jeff is more adamantly in favor of homeschooling than I am. I guess I got lucky that way. For my part, I'm also still mad at the public school and the public university for advising me that I should take out all of the debt I need to to pay for college. Because, of course, when I graduate from college, I'll get a job and I'll pay it off with no problem, right? No, that's a load of crap. There are much better ways to do it. There's no reason that somebody has to go to a four-year university to get the basic breadth requirements like English and math out of the way. There is no reason for that, and it costs way too much. But that could be a whole separate rant. I won't get into that too much here. Jeff and I plan to show our kids a much better cost-benefit analysis of college and try to make sure that our kids choose a more financially wise path. Mass schooling also wastes time. There's so much time spent just trying to get all of the kids to pay attention at the same time, trying to organize them to do the same activity, and tr shuffling them between classes, especially in the upper grades. When I was in high school, we didn't use block scheduling. We had eight periods per day. So that means we had seven transition periods, one of them being lunch. So if it was four minutes per transition period, that means that we spent at least half an hour just going between classes. Then each class had to take attendance. Each class had to review what they talked about the day, the day prior. Each class had to wrap up and excuse the students. How much time does that waste? It's well known among homeschool families that what public schools do in 8 to 10 hours a day, once you include homework on top of the school day, homeschoolers accomplish in like half that time. Now, if I can homeschool my kids with all of these other benefits, and give them an extra four or five hours a day to work on their own projects or pursue some other passions or just not be so stressed all day, I'm going to do it. Number eight, and the last on my list, is that my kids don't fit the traditional school levels at this point. The bigs just turned five years old, and they're not even eligible for kindergarten because they missed the deadline this year for kindergarten. They turned five 15 days after the cutoff. But they're already reading at a first grade level when they're not even eligible for kindergarten for a, another year. And they're doing math at a first grade level. Their handwriting is about on grade level, so they're not quite developing at the same rate in all subjects, at least according to the public school standards. So imagine if I work with them for another year on their reading and math. Are they going to be at a second grade level trying to enter kindergarten? And if they, or even if an adult, was put into a class that was far below their abilities, anybody would get bored. And what do kids do when they get bored? 
they make their own fun. <laughs> for better or for worse, they make their own fun. And quite often, any divergence from what's planned for the classroom ends up being troublesome for the teacher. I don't want my kids to end up being troublemakers in public school just because they're too far ahead of the curve for the teachers to keep up with it. And again, that's not the fault of the teachers. That's just a characteristic of mass schooling. You cannot cater to every individual. Even if my kids are not labeled as troublemakers, so much of their day would be spent on stuff that they've already learned. I don't want to send them to glorified daycare when they gain nothing from it. Now, that's not to say it would be glorified daycare for everybody or every family, but that's what I feel like it would be for my kids given their levels. As our kids get older, I suspect that this list will expand and change. Some of them will stay, some of them may not, although I'm not sure which ones those would be at this point, because this is a pretty basic list so far. Which of these reasons, if any of them, resonates most with you? Have you considered homeschooling, or are you following another educational path? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to chat about it. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time.